14. I don't know if they're the top 14 because there's always new ones, but these are some of the top 14. Now, let me preface this, and this is what I do with all my trainings. You're not allowed to get overwhelmed. Okay, so that's one of the first things you need to hear from this training. You aren't allowed to get overwhelmed. You need to find one thing to integrate and implement, and then after that, you can come back to this training, and you can find the next thing that you want to integrate and implement, because everybody's at different levels. So some of you may hear something that's very basic to somebody else, but to you, it may be advanced. You've never heard that or learned that before, but I can promise you this, you'll find at least one thing that will help you to do better at social media and Facebook. And we'll continue, we'll do more of these trainings and, and help you guys out. So with that said, you're not allowed to be overwhelmed. You can buy one thing, you can come back to these trainings. Tip number one, don't over tag. And you may say, okay, what's tagging? Most of you know what tagging is, right? If there's a photo or there's something, you can go tag 50 plus people and you go tag them. And the theory is, is if I go tag everybody, it's gonna show up on their timeline, which means I'm gonna get more exposure. But Facebook's caught on. Facebook more and more rewards authenticity. It's very difficult or much harder to game Facebook. So because of that, when you tag and there isn't relevancy to the tag, if you think about it, in theory, people think, well, yes, I'm gonna get more likes and comments because now it's gonna show up on everybody else's feed. So if I tag Randy and if I tag Craig and if I tag Alan, if I tag Jake, now all of a sudden all their audiences are going to see it. No, nope. Facebook shows content that's relevant to other people. And the more that people like and comment, the more they're going to show it to other people. So I would only tag other people in your posts that are relevant to that post. So if they're in a photo or if there's something, some special occasion or something, but don't be the person that's just trying to tag everybody you can. Cause if you've noticed, if you've done it before, seeing somebody else that have done it before, they don't get that much interaction. So that's tip number one. Now let's rewind a little bit. Understand the Facebook algorithm in simple terms. Cause there's all these Facebook algorithm experts these days, and they're trying to explain to you all these things that are super complicated. So this is what I want you to understand. The most simplistic way to explain the algorithm. Facebook years ago, think five, six plus years ago, if Craig makes a post at 8.01 a.m., and then Alan makes a post at 8.02 a.m., and Jake makes a post at 8.03 a.m., and Randy makes a post at 8.04 a.m., then all of those posts would show in order to everyone. But then all of a sudden, Facebook started becoming irrelevant because there were too many posts and it was this smorgasbord and everybody saw a lot of content that they didn't want to see. People are posting, I ate this for breakfast, right? Or I'm having a bad day and people would get annoyed. So Facebook created an algorithm where they're going to show you a small percentage of everybody's posts, not everyone's posts. You're not going to see everyone's posts. And thank goodness, because we'd be overwhelmed. So now they show you the most relevant posts. And there's a lot of things that go into that. We're not going to go into everything in that right now. We're going to keep it very simple for you. So for your tracking with me so far. So the more popular a post is, which is the more interaction, the more likes and comments and shares, the more Facebook says, wow, Craig, this is relevant content. Let's show this to more and more people. And the less likes and comments, the less likely it is to show to people. So if it gets two likes after an hour, Facebook's gonna say, ding, 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 ding. Why would I show this content to more people? Because it doesn't seem like it's that popular or relevant. So just understand that for the algorithm, that will help you guys understand. Nothing else right now, if you're just, if you're just new to, and I don't see new to Facebook, you're just trying to figure it out, just know that, that's it. That's very simple for understanding the algorithm. Tip number two, this is a big one that a lot of people still don't know. Never leave a link in your post. When I say never, I literally mean never leave a link in your post. So you're not going to post, it doesn't matter if you're posting a YouTube video that you liked, or maybe it was an event, or maybe you're pitching and you've got a Tabala event and you want people to come to. Think of this, Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook, good old Zuckerberg, he doesn't want to take you off Facebook. He wants to keep you on Facebook. 
So anytime you post a link, the algorithm instantly says, oh, let's not show this content. We don't want to, we don't want to take them off Facebook. We don't want to help our competitors. So here's the workaround. If, and the reason why I said unless it's paid, because a business page, yes, if it's paid, then there is no algorithm. It's a it's paid content. You break the algorithm. That's a business or fan page. I'm talking about your personal profile. People say the same thing in a group. In a group, you can absolutely post a link. There's no algorithm in a Facebook group. I'm talking about on your personal profile. So here's the workaround. Make a post, and if you want to post a link, just say link in the comments. And then after you make the post, you put the link in the very first comment. Do that, and voila, all of a sudden now, you've, you've cracked really the little algorithm. You've kind of bypassed that now where it's not going to ding you. It's not going to go against you. So hopefully that's simple. Now, for some of you, that's great. That's enough. You can just listen to the other stuff here, and you can say, I'm going to start out with integrating the first two things, and you move on. Remember, not allowed to get overwhelmed. Tip number three. Don't be the Facebook stalker. What's the Facebook stalker? The purpose of being on Facebook is to increase your likability, your credibility, your recallability. Recallability is just being memorable. You want people to think of you, right? And connect with people. And then ultimately, in the end, hopefully profitability. Sometimes it's just a connection or friendship. Sometimes it's advice. Sometimes it's mentorship. And sometimes it's a transaction where they become part of your business or buy your products. Well, if you're the Facebook stalker and you never interact, and I'm gonna talk about several of these things, tip number three goes into several other tips. But if you're doing that, then you're never interacting, you're never connecting, you're never networking with other people. So don't just be the Facebook stalker. Make sure when you see other people's posts that are relevant, it doesn't take very long to go like and comment and interact because it's old people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And think about this simple thing right now. You haven't spoken to somebody in 10 years. Imagine if you start to comment and like their posts for the next three months. And I don't mean crazy, obsessive, stalker, or weird, or anything like that. But just, just normal, you're being authentic, you're being you. Imagine if you reach out to that person now. How much less awkward is it? They feel like there's this connection and you guys have been in touch, even though you really haven't. Think about that. So that's, the, that's, that's understanding Facebook. And that goes with tip number four is comment on other people's posts. You know, just take the time to show that. Um, number five, <clears throat> I always say unclutter your feed. There's a couple of things that you can do. You can click on when someone's a friend and on the following and you can click on unfollow. So let's say you want to say friends, but this person's just, we'll call them negative Nelly. And they're always negative and it's just cluttering your feed, but you don't want to unfriend them maybe. Well, some of them you can unfriend, others you can unfollow so you don't see their content, but you're still friends with them. And then other people that are maybe potential clients, maybe they're potential connections, maybe they're leaders inside of your company that you want to follow their content so you can stay up to date. You can go and you can click on see first. So you click over the following right there. And if you click over the following right next to the friends, you'll see see first pop up. You have up to 30 on C first. So now I have 30, which I wish I could have 50, but now I've got my C first with the people's content that I want to see all of the time. So I'm uncluttering my Facebook so that it's a lot more simplified so I can maximize it. You can do the same thing. Maybe you have your top 10 potential prospects and leaders that you want to make sure you're interacting with. So that's one thing to understand. The next thing, tip number six, sounds really simple, but I hope you understand it. Have a well done profile and cover photo. Why? That's your brand. That's your first impression. They say first impressions can last, can last a lifetime. So think about this. You go to somebody's Facebook, they, they added you as a friend. You're like, okay, who is this person that added me as a friend? And you go check out their profile. And they have a picture of themselves, themselves and some cartoon character. Or they have a picture of themselves and they've got seven cats. Now, I'm not ripping on cats. It's great. You love cats. You love dogs. But you're probably going to be less likely to take that specific individual, right, and accept them as a friend. So have a well-done profile and cover photo that conveys your brand, conveys what you want to convey. Right now, this, is, this one is, I just updated mine. So the one I have now shows me speaking, and it shows a new family picture. 
I want to show that, yes, I speak, so I want to show some credibility. And then I also want to show my family because that's the most important thing to me. So think about that as you're doing it. And, and it's just simple. Once you set it up once, you're good. You can, you can update it once or twice a year. So again, don't get overwhelmed. Hopefully you're tracking with me. So tip number seven, when you make a post, try to reply to everyone who comments on your posts. Now, if you make a post that gets way too many comments, that's called positive stress. And you don't need to go reply to every single one's comments if you don't want to. But remember, what did I teach you about the algorithm? The more popular your post is, the more people it's going to be shown to. So Facebook's going to say popular posts, show it to more people. So when you're replying to everyone's comments, what are you doing? You're making your post even more popular. It's, it's almost like you're boosting your own post. So yes, you can say, you can look at certain influencers and you can say, well, this big leader doesn't do that. Well, if they're getting so many comments and likes, then it's almost like they bypass the algorithm where they can post, uh, they can post what they ate for breakfast and they get 100 or 200 likes. That's not relevant. They've kind of bypassed that now because they've created that credibility and likability where everyone's just going to like whatever they post. But for you, if you're trying to get to that point, try to reply. I still try to reply to everyone's posts. Not when I do, like if I do a Facebook live, I usually get over 500 comments up to 1500 comments. I don't have time. I'm not going to do that. That would be a waste of my time. I don't think anyone would expect that. But if I make a post that has, you know, 20, 30 comments, I'm going to do my best to try to reply. That helps out a ton. So that's tip number seven. Now tip number eight, I think this is important to understand. Be consistent in posting every single day. Now remember, you, you can all come back to this training. You can cover these trainings with your teams. You can cover certain sections. Maybe there's a section every single month you come back to and you say, let's integrate, let's implement with our teams. But when I say be, be consistent in posting every day, if I'm gonna go teach you, right, and we're gonna go train and you wanna run a half marathon, we're not, and let's say you have been running only on average a mile a day. We're not going to go all of a sudden say, okay, let's go do a half marathon. Or let's, let's go run 12 miles. No, you got to work your way up to that. So we'll start out with a mile, move up to two miles, move up to three miles. Same thing. When I say be consistent in posting every day, if you're only posting once a week, move it up to twice a week, move it up to three times a week and slowly start to move it up so that you can be consistent in posting every single day. Why? Because you're going to increase your likability. You're going to increase your credibility. You're going to become memorable to people. That makes a difference. You're going to be front of mind, right? And you do not have to post. I would say 80% of your posts should be non-business related. Be positive. Be authentic, as I, as I put down in the slide. Be vulnerable. Be humorous. Be insightful. Show people who you are. Now, here's another little side tip. When you post something about your business, I wouldn't do something that's spammy. If you say, hey, come join my company or private message me for more information, that, that's, that's too spammy. You want to be a better marketer than that. So, for example, if I'm talking specifically about weight loss, I wouldn't say, come buy my incredible Tabala products. Here's my favorite product. You know, message me. There's a special. I wouldn't do that. The best marketers tell a story. You don't get on Facebook all excited. Oh, I, I, I hope my friends spam me today. You don't get on TV, right? And you're watching your favorite show and you're so excited, unless it's the Super Bowl. You're so excited the commercials came on and you're going to get spammed. You don't get so excited that, you know, you had 10 people knock on your door to pitch you something, right? Where it's the door-to-door -door salespeople who I respect a ton because that's hard, but you don't get excited. So why would we be those people on Facebook, on social media, provide value? And so you may say, well, what kind of posts are you saying, Rob? So if you're going to make a business-related post, why not share a story? So let's say you had a, a friend and she had a baby two years ago. And she hasn't been able to lose the baby weight for two years. Well, I would say, okay, share a story of, hey, my good friend Mary, she had her third child two years ago. She hadn't been able to lose the weight for two years. And in the last month, she's lost 20 pounds. And 
the best part is, is she feels like she has more energy than she's had in years. And big shout out to Mary. Congratulations. That right there, that's a value post. That's called pull marketing, attraction marketing. You're probably going to have more people that message you about that than you would a private message me. Think about this. Everybody knows they can private message you. By you saying private message me, they're less likely to private message you. Think about that. So there's two things to understand. One, by telling the story, you're gonna have more people private message you. Number two, by telling the story, now when you end up reaching out to these people on Facebook, you've created some rapport. You've created some credibility. Now maybe instead of closing one out of 10 people, you close two out of 10 people. Huge difference there. So I think it's important for you to understand really the purpose and what you're doing and building. And hopefully you, you all kind of do a little mastermind with your little core groups and you create, what are some value posts we could do? What are some stories we could tell? Facts tell, stories sell. People don't appreciate it when you're in their face. So instead, get really good at telling a story. That's what we do as network marketers and everything we do. We get really good at telling truthful, authentic, powerful stories. Okay, again, hope you're all tracking with me. It's a little bit hard. I'm, on a, I'm not on the Facebook Live. I'm on the screen share here, so it's weird, right? Normally, you got a crowd or Facebook Live, so you got all this feedback going on. Instead, it's just Craig and I just talking to each other, you know, Actually, me just talking to Craig and Craig just there like probably like, I hope I get one thing out of this whole thing. So it's all good. So don't worry. Like I said, you figure out because everyone's at different stages in, in we'll say in their in their Facebook world. So my goal is to try to cover as many beginner, intermediate, advanced and make it so it's not just one training one time. It's one training where you can come back to this over and over and over again over the course of weeks and months and mastermind with your group. So tip number nine, very simple one, but it's powerful. Add emojis to every post. One recent study says 33%. Another one I just read said 50%. It's going to increase engagement. So here's a simple tip. When I say add emojis, don't look like you're in preschool where you have three words and then you've got five emojis and then you have five more words and six emojis. No, just, just you can go look at my posts if you want. Um, I keep it very simple. I add emojis, but if you notice the right place, like it's not over the top or anything like that. So you can always look at my posts and kind of see, it's taken me time to learn how to do it. I used to not do enough and I did too many. So I've really learned a lot of this stuff really just through trial and error. Tip number 10, Facebook Lives. Facebook Lives will be promoted on Facebook at least, at least, at least 10 times more than any post that you make. And the reason is, is because Facebook wants to own video. Facebook wants to own video. So because of that, and Facebook has found that people are liking videos more and they want to stay relevant. So there's just something to a live video. So I'm not saying that you have to do live videos to build your business. I'm saying that if you can learn to do them, it may be the greatest thing that you could learn. It's painful at first because you are not going to have as many people that are on watching it or tuning in. I get it a hundred percent. It's so, so painful, but you can learn how to do them. It's also going to make you a better trainer. It's going to help you to become a better communicator. I know for me, even after I had done, made a lot of money in this industry, my first six months, I still felt uncomfortable doing Facebook Lives. I felt more comfortable on stage with 10,000 people than I did doing Facebook Lives. So I get it. So I'm not telling you you have to do them. I'm just telling you that they will be promoted heavily on Facebook and it's increasing. They said this year they're going to promote them even more. You notice, just go on your feed and it just feels like it's, wow, live, 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 live. More than ever. So that's something really important. Tip number 11, really simple tip. I would add three to new people, three to three to five, max 10 new people a day. Um, again, for some of you, that's overwhelming because you're just getting on Facebook. You don't have to do that. The reason why I think that's great is because now you're increasing your circle of influence, your audience, you're getting to know new people, helps you to never run out of contact. So the next question is, is well, where, where do I add people? I'm not sure where to add people. I don't, do I just add random suggested friends? 
My simple suggestion is just go to Facebook groups of things that you're passionate about. If you're passionate about hiking, go to a Facebook group, go interact, go comment, um, go make a post on that Facebook group. So they start to get to know you a little bit. Go add friends. The second thing is, is if you see a friend that makes a really good post that you love, you resonate with, and other people like that post, why not add some of those people? Those people are thinking the same as you. They're like-minded. So you're just looking for people that are like-minded and add those people and make friends with those people. And I'll talk about that here in a second. And then you can delete a couple people. If people are totally inactive, if they're negative, if you wish them a happy birthday and a week later they still haven't responded and you don't know them at all, it's probably a sign that they're not really active on Facebook unless they have a huge following. And that's okay to, to delete to make sure you keep that Facebook really clean. So last three tips here. And then you guys can take a deep breath for these last three tips. And then we are done and you're good and you can figure out which is your favorite. And I'd love for you, if you're watching the Facebook Live, drop in the comments below what's been the most insightful tip for you. What's been the most helpful? So if you're watching this live right now, and also drop in the comments where you're tuning in from. I love going back and looking. City, state, province, country, where in the world you are tuning in from. Give a huge shout out. So tip number 12, this should be common sense. Don't spam new contacts. You don't go make friends with somebody. They add you, they accept you as a friend request, and then all of a sudden you just shoot them a link. Again, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care is what John Maxwell says. So cultivate a relationship. Now, I don't, now don't over cultivate, meaning don't go, you know, where you're spending like six months trying to make friends and you never transition the business. On average, on average, it's about the third time where you can transition a conversation into asking them what they do for a living or asking them, you know, or, or getting them to take a look at your product or your business. Now, when I say on average, sometimes it does naturally happen the first time in a conversation. Sometimes it's the fourth or fifth time. But the purpose of networking, the purpose of social media for you from a business standpoint is to take friend, or strangers, turn strangers into friends, friends into family. Think about that. You want to turn strangers into friends, friends into family. You want to maintain old and new friendships. It's a great place to do it. Facebook is the ultimate place to network. But as we know, there's always people that abuse the networking and they make friends. I mean, how do you feel? If you, your next 10 friends that make friends with you and they go send you 10 links and say, Hey, are you open to joining my business? Are you open to taking a look? You're like, I don't even know you, right? What are you doing? So utilize Facebook the right way where you're, you will never run out of contacts ever run out of contacts. If you consistently do this, what I do, and this is a tip that isn't on here. Actually it is on here on tip number 13 is I've done this for now 11 years. I reach out to 250 people a month and I just say hello. Now, of course, some of those conversations led into business, but I just said hello. And some of those people are the same people I said hello to three months ago. But what I'm doing is, is I'm building my ark before the flood. Can you imagine if Noah in the Bible, the flood comes and all of a sudden he's like, guys, I need an ark. I need an ark. Well, it's too late, man. The flood's here. It's the same thing we do in network marketing. All of a sudden, we run out of contacts because we haven't been developing new contacts. And the flood's here. And it's, you call up Craig, Craig, oh, I really, I believe in this company and these products, but I've ran out of contacts, Craig. I don't know what to say or what to do. Well, this is a strategy that will help you to never run out of contacts. So, 250 may be overwhelming to you. That's, that's nine a day, a little bit less. But, I mean, nine a day? You go on Facebook Messenger, you leave a 20-second voice message? It's not that hard. Now, if you want to do two a day, one a day, three a day, whatever you want, you figure out what your number is and you do that. But imagine, imagine if you did that for six months. Imagine if you did that for a year. Imagine if you did that for two years. Imagine. Imagine what it would do. How it would help your business. And, and I can give you guys a ton more trainings and you guys can go on. on and I'll get, do this last one here. But 
if you guys go on just totally five free trainings, it doesn't, it's not going to pitch you or, or tell you guys you have to buy anything or anything like that. But if you guys go to NWM, which stands for network marketing, nwminsights.com, it'll give you five free trainings, how to overcome objections. It'll give you a free Facebook live. And if you guys go there, nwminsights.com, it will do that. But tip number 14, create Facebook groups specific to the group. So you guys right now, and we'll talk about this another time, we'll do a whole training. You have a customer group that just recently started. If you are not all utilizing that group, you're missing the boat. Some of the top companies I know in the industry, because I meet with all the top leaders, I consult for some of these companies, they are utilizing their customer Facebook group like crazy. They're sharing a couple stories a day on there. They're adding all their new customers. They're messaging and letting know their potential customers that the power of this, this group. And by doing that, guess what they're doing? Not only is their recruiting increasing because you got the new average person that's sometimes scared to talk to their customers. And if you don't know what that customer group is, you can ask after because Jake's been managing that a lot. But I promise you, I promise you, you're going to want to participate and you're going to want to utilize that. Because think of the average person. They're scared to talk to somebody new. But if you get the average brand new person and you teach them a strategy of messaging their friend first and say, hey, look, I'm going to add you to this group. I think you're going to love these products. Check out this group. You're going to see a lot of information. If you don't like it, feel free to leave. Everybody can do that and add 10. So if you add your 10 new people that join out of 10 people, that's 100 people that join that group. You're increasing recruiting. You're also increasing retention because those people that order the products are going to see continual stories of the Tabal products and how they work. I promise you, if you're not utilizing that group, you're missing the boat. And it takes time to kind of learn the art of how to do that and create duplication models. And then obviously you have your other Facebook groups, you know, for leaders and the masses as far as just building their business and you're utilizing recognition. I know that is a lot of content, a lot. But the great part is you can find that one thing that resonates the most with you. The great part is you can come back and watch this training over and over again. 